Welcome back. We will continue our discussion on tactics. Today we will look at the quality attribute modifiability and see what kind of tax, tactics exist for that. So, what is modifiability? If you look at uh, the lifetime of a piece of code, typically the development time is very small in its lifetime. If you look at the costs, actually, these are measured parameters. They say apparently only about 20 percent of the cost is occurs during the development phase. When we say development, what we mean is conceptualization, requirements, design, development, testing and once you deploy and then it goes into uh, the maintenance mode, it lives on for many years and it gets changed and so on. And so, the first phase the where you come to the first deployment is only about the 20 percent is only about 20 percent of the total time and cost. The rest of the 80 percent goes in, in uh, the maintenance phase. So, we are looking at our ability to make changes during that rest of that 80 percent of the lifetime of the software. So, these changes are typically to uh, you know you may be fixing defects that have been figured out, encountered or dug out after the release. You may be adding new features or you may be actually sometimes retiring old features. You may want to incorporate new uh, technologies, new platforms. So, we are looking at the costs and the risks that are involved in trying to make these changes during the lifetime of a software. So, what are the tactics that are there for modifiability? They are classified into four groups. The first set of tactics says you know you reduce the size of a module that you this is going to help in modifiability. You increase cohesion, you reduce coupling or you defer binding time. This is another very interesting tactic. So, in each one of them there are some set of tactics under this category for example. We will see this one by one. So, uh, if you are talking of modifiability and reduce size is the kind of tactic we are looking at. It is a very simple tactic. Typically, if the module becomes very big, you break it into two similar smaller modules. And if any change is needed, perhaps a change is needed only in one part of the module. So, it is easier to change. The second tactic that we can think of is increase semantic coherence. So, essentially it says move some responsibilities from one module to another. So, you have two sets of modules, there are some each one of them is performing some uh, function and then uh, if you see that uh, uh, there are some functions which are similar to the kind of functions that other module is performing, then you move it there. For example, all activities related to database read write should sit in one module, all activities related to network should sit in another module. So, that is a kind of semantic coherence we are talking about. Similar functions stay together. The other uh, next uh, tactic is encapsulate. Let us see if a, there is a module A using the services of a module B. What we should do is to make it available through an interface. So, there is an interface for B and uh, A access the interface class. So, even if B changes, if we continue to maintain the interface, A does not need to change. This makes modifiability much easier. So, this is the other tactic. Now, using an intermediary is another very powerful much used tactic. Essentially, what one is saying is there are these various modules talking to each other. If we use one module through which they all talk to each other, then it becomes easier to make changes. We encounter this in uh, publish subscribe uh, design pattern for example. There are a large set of publishers and subscribers and they do not even though one subscriber may be talking to multiple publishers and a publisher is serving multiple subscribers, they do not actually talk to each other directly, they talk through a intermediary. So, we can keep adding publishers and change their formats and whatever without having to hit the subscribers. This is using an intermediary. So, the next tactic is restrict dependencies. This is again a very simple tactic. Very often we see uh, our software in layers. So, if you make sure that um, the 
sharing of data and services is with the immediately next layer. There is no drill down to layers below than other than the one which is next, then you are actually helping in maintenance. Right? Let us see if we can draw it. So, let us say I have a I have a layer like this sitting on top of another layer and there is another layer here. This one should not access this service, it should only go through this. So, this is also help you in modifiability that is what we are calling maintainability. The next tactic we are talking of is refactor. It says if the same service is being provided by two modules in two different situations, refactor the code and make them one module. This is the situation we commonly encounter when code has been developed over time, especially by two different sets of people. There is some kind of function that is needed and somebody has written it some time back, but uh, often without the knowledge and sometimes due to uh, other reasons, we actually somebody else writes it again, something very similar. So, when a refactoring exercise happens, this aspect is identified and we try to put, bring these two functions together and put it in one place and, and resolve any other small differences that may exist. So, this is also going to help you modifiability. Abstract common services is again very simple tactic. If the services are not quite the same, but similar, implement a more generalized service. So, I have let us say this is dealing with integers, this is dealing with strings and this is dealing with real numbers. I may want to actually abstract them and implement a function, which can resolve them through some polymorphic operation or something. So, defer binding time is actually a very, uh, very nice tactic. Uh, all of us know about it in uh, more the ways than one. Here, we are talking about the ability to make changes by people who are not software developers, maybe at run time by end users very often. So, or system developers when they are booting up the system. So, this is these are some examples like uh, a very common example is uh, you can go and set the parameters, the number of processes that your operating system will allow or amount of space that is allocated for a particular file or the size of the database buffers when a DBMS engine boots up or even simpler uh, the screen saver that you have on your desktop. These are all changes to the software made by the end user, not by the programmer. So, essentially what is to be done, what is to be computed, what is to be shown, displayed etcetera is that decision is postponed, the binding time, the binding time is deferred. So, configuration files are a, a very simple example of uh, understanding what deferred binding time is all about. You can also have runtime lookups, you know, uh, like changing the screen server is a runtime parameter. So, what we want you to do is uh, think over this modifiability issue and uh, look for some examples and uh, some new tactics. Thank you.